In this lesson, I'm going to share with you how easy it is to use SERP scraping inside of ZimWriter to bring in much more accurate facts about the article that you're writing about, and then also SEO keywords and build a better outline. It's very easy to do inside of ZimWriter. The first thing I want you to do is to click on the secret training button, which will bring up this page. And then as you scroll down, you'll find a SERP scraping link. So click that, bring up the page, and definitely go through this and read this at your leisure. It's very important. There's a lot of very important knowledge and, and nuggets in here to really get the most out of this feature. Now this feature does, SERP scraping does require scrape al, but once you set it all up, it's very powerful. It's available in the bulk writer and the SEO writer right now. So we'll click the bulk writer. And all you have to do, you'll put your title in like how to rank higher on Google. You'll click on the SERP scraping button and you click enable. And that's literally all you have to do to use SERP scraping inside of ZimWriter. But what exactly happens behind the scenes when you go and you write your article with SERP scraping enabled? So this is high level right now. This is what happens. ZimWriter will perform the following steps when you're SERP scraping. So ZimWriter first contacts ScrapeL and asks ScrapeL to perform a Google search of the article title. And ScrapeL will go out to Google. So how to rank higher in Google, and it will scrape the top results. So how to rank higher on Google, how to rank higher on Google. It scrapes all this data and brings it in. Then what happens is it will store the results in the cache database, up to 1,500 SERP scrapes. And then ZimWriter will determine which web pages rank for that term and are relevant to that term. So as an example, how to rank higher on Google, yeah, the first 10 results are all going to re relate. They're all relevant to how to rank higher on Google. But if you have a much more niche subject, like how to train a snail, I spelled it wrong, S-N-A-I-L, to ride a unicycle, you're not going to get any results. How to ride a unicycle, learn how to ride a unicycle, watch till the end to see me breaking my speed record, how to ride a mount on a unicycle. So none of these results deal with how to teach a snail to ride a unicycle. So in that case, your SERP scrape will likely fail. So SERP scraping is very useful for situations where you have a broader query, not something super niche that no one has probably talked about. So ZimWriter determines the first five that are relevant for the term. And then once it finds those pages, it will scrape those pages, and then it will summarize those pages, and then uses the subheadings from those five pages to create your outline. And then it uses the summaries from those five pages to build discussion points for each of the subheadings in the article. And then finally, it uses SEO keywords determined from those articles to insert into your particular article. So a lot of stuff happens behind the scenes that at least in the bulk writer, you don't need to do much about. It just automatically happens. Now in the SEO writer, you can see a lot more of this uh, up front. So we'll put our title in, how to rank higher on Google. We'd click SERP scraping. We'd enable it and scrape the SERP now. So scraping the SERP now in the SEO writer will allow you to pre-scrape it and edit the information and make sure you have the best information possible before you write the article. You don't have to do that. We can just enable it and then go down here and start writing with or without scraping. It doesn't matter. It will scrape the SERP because we've enabled it up here. You can do that too. It's totally up to you, but we're going to pre-scrape it. Now I've already scraped this. I've already had ZimWriter go out and scrape this particular query. So it's going to pull it from the cache database. It's going to be instantaneous. Watch this. See, it's already done. So there's the global background based on the SERP scrape. And then here are the H2s and H3s from the competition. So we can use option three to create our H2s using the AI plus the competition H2s and H3s plus the global background to, to get a really comprehensive outline. So let's say we want 10 H2s, for instance, and we'll press option three and we'll just wait a moment. And there you go. So this is all based on the global background, the competition, and then also the AI. Now, what's really cool is if we, let's enable color outline so we can differentiate these, enable subheading background. If you were to go and just write the article right now, come down here and just say, start the SEO writer with scraping or without scraping, because we've already scraped everything. It would go ahead and write the article. And then for each one of these H2s, it would pull in some discussion points from the, the scraped SERP. But you can pull that stuff in beforehand and then manually edit that if you really want to. This little SS button, if we press it, it will create those discussion points right now for us. So understanding Google's ranking metric prioritizes relevant and useful pages for search queries. 
Domains achieve ranking through Google's algorithm process, which considers quality, relevance, and utility. So here's our different discussion points. Now we can take some of these out or we can add to it. It's up to you what you want to do. Then when you're all done with that, you can configure the rest of your options and you can go through these SEO keywords and edit them if you really want to, but it's going to try to use these SEO keywords as it writes the article. And then finally, you just either start the writer with scraping or no scraping. It doesn't really matter. And it will write your article. It's very easy with SERP scraping now inside of ZimWriter to bring in factually correct data from the Google SERP and then bring in those keywords and build a really high quality outline with just a couple clicks of a button. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below or hit me up on Facebook. Otherwise, like the video, subscribe, and I will see you in the next lesson.